Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. I started watching Andrew and everything that he said had a witness within my spirit and he made the word come alive. You know, he just helped me connect dots. I have such a passion and a love for the word of God and he deepened that for me. And now here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing to teach on prayer, and this week I've been talking about what prayer is. I spent the very first week, this is my third week of teaching, the first week was talking about what prayer is not, and then I was contrasting the way that prayer was done under the Old Covenant with the way that it's done under the New Covenant. And then this week I've been trying to get to what is the real heart of prayer. If I taught what prayer is not, now we're talking about what prayer is. And basically, I've just been trying to say that it's just fellowship, relationship with the Lord. I was using the verse out of John 3, 16, where Jesus said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The goal of salvation is not perishing. Now, that's part of it, and praise God for that. But the goal is to have everlasting life. And most people think that's only talking about something that takes place once we go to heaven. But it says in verse 36 of John chapter 3 that he that believes on the Son hath life. It's not something that's future. It's present tense. And then Jesus defined eternal life in John 17, 3, where he said that this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom He has sent. And on yesterday's program, I was trying to show that that's not talking about just an intellectual knowledge, saying, oh, yeah, I know about God, because even, you know, in James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, you believe that there's one God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But won't you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? It takes more than just a mental assent, an acknowledgement that God exists. There needs to be a intimate, personal relationship. True salvation, true Christianity is not just a Christian set of beliefs versus a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu set of beliefs but it is a relationship with God. Jesus came and died to remove the sin barrier that had separated us from God so that we could have eternal life right now, intimate relationship with God that will reach its climax and its fulfillment, its ultimate fulfillment in heaven. But right now, we should be having relationship with God. And I made this statement on yesterday's program that I believe the vast majority of people who have come to the Lord and have prayed for forgiveness of sins, and I'm not saying that they haven't been born again. They are born again. Their sins are forgiven. If they were to die, they would go to heaven instead of hell. But the vast majority of people who have come to the Lord have gotten their sins forgiven, and they've had the barrier between us and God removed, but they haven't moved in to this intimate, close relationship with God. And I believe that that's a failure to receive what salvation is really all about. Did you know that the early New Testament Christians, they had this vibrant relationship with God, so much so that even when they were being persecuted, I've read reports about people that were burned at the stake. They literally had a sharpened stake run up through them. They were impaled and then burned. And yet Nero literally stuck his fingers in his ears and said, why must these Christians sing as they're being martyred? There was joy. It was something more than just a doctrine. It was more than a belief. You know, we've got certain sects that go out and knock on doors and they have a doctrine that they push. But boy, you go to talking to them about personal relationship and they don't have that. I REMEMBER A BUNCH OF JEHOVAH WITNESSES COMING TO MY DOOR, AND I INVITED THEM IN. AND THEY STARTED TELLING ME THEIR DOCTRINE, AND and I STARTED COUNTERING IT WITH PERSONAL RELATIONSHIPS, SAYING, BUT I KNOW THAT THIS ISN'T TRUE, BECAUSE... AND IT WAS BECAUSE OF MY PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. AND WHEN YOU GO TO TALKING ABOUT PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP, PEOPLE LIKE JEHOVAH WITNESSES, MORMONS DO NOT HAVE 
THAT PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. THEY HAVE A DOCTRINE AND THEY'VE GOT A ZEAL AND A LOT OF IT IS MOTIVATED FOR THE GOING OUT AND KNOCKING ON THE DOORS. THAT GAINS THEM, uh, YOU KNOW, ACCESS TO GOD IN SOME SPECIAL WAY. AND SO YOU'LL HAVE PEOPLE THAT THEY HAVE DOCTRINES AND STUFF, BUT BOY, IT ISN'T A PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. BUT THE FIRST CENTURY CHURCH, IT WAS ABOUT PERSONAL RELATIONSHIP. MATTER OF FACT, JOHN WROTE IN, in uh, 1 JOHN CHAPTER 1, LET ME JUST TURN OVER AND READ THIS. I'M NOT SURE THAT I COULD QUOTE ALL OF THAT, BUT 1 JOHN CHAPTER 1, HE SAYS IN VERSE 1, THAT WHICH WAS FROM THE BEGINNING, WHICH WE HAVE HEARD, WHICH WE HAVE SEEN WITH OUR EYES, WHICH WE HAVE LOOKED UPON, AND OUR HANDS HAVE HANDLED OF THE WORD OF LIFE. FOR THIS LIFE WAS MANIFESTED, AND WE HAVE SEEN IT, AND BEAR WITNESS, AND TO SHOW UNTO YOU THAT ETERNAL LIFE, WHICH WAS WITH THE FATHER, AND WAS MANIFESTED UNTO US. HE'S TALKING ABOUT ETERNAL LIFE, ABOUT RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. AND IN VERSE 3, IT SAYS, THAT WHICH WE HAVE SEEN AND HEARD DECLARE WE UNTO YOU, THAT YE ALSO MAY HAVE FELLOWSHIP WITH US. AND TRULY, OUR FELLOWSHIP IS WITH THE FATHER AND WITH THE SON, JESUS CHRIST. THIS IS WHAT THE EARLY NEW TESTAMENT SAINTS WERE PREACHING IS ABOUT A RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD, NOT JUST A DOCTRINE. AND THERE ARE SO MANY PEOPLE, THERE ARE PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU MAYBE HAVE ACCEPTED AND EMBRACED CHRISTIAN DOCTRINE. YOU MAY BELIEVE THAT JESUS WAS THE SON OF GOD, THAT HE CAME AND HE DIED FOR OUR SINS, AND YOU MAY HAVE ACCEPTED THAT AND EVEN PRAYED A PRAYER SO THAT WHEN YOU DIE, YOU WILL GO TO HEAVEN WITH YOUR SINS FORGIVEN INSTEAD OF GOING TO HELL, HAVING TO SUFFER FOR YOUR SINS. YOU MAY HAVE GONE THAT FAR, BUT HAVE YOU GONE FAR ENOUGH TO WHERE YOU ACTUALLY HAVE FELLOWSHIP WITH THE FATHER AND WITH THE SON. AND SEE, THESE EARLY NEW TESTAMENT CHRISTIANS, THEY WOULD, THEY WOULD ACTUALLY FIGHT. I'VE READ FOX'S BOOK OF MARTYRS, AND THERE ARE REPORTS OF CHRISTIANS ACTUALLY NOT FIGHTING PHYSICALLY, BUT BEING CONTENTIOUS ABOUT WHO GOT THE HONOR OF GOING OUT INTO THE Colosseum AND THE CIRCUS MAXIMUS TO DIE AND GIVE THEIR LIFE FOR THE GLORY OF GOD. THERE'S NOT VERY MANY CHRISTIANS TODAY WHO WOULD DO SOMETHING LIKE THAT. BECAUSE THEY HAVE A DOCTRINE, AND MAYBE EVEN THEY HAVE A BELIEF THAT WILL GET THEM TO HEAVEN, BUT THEY DON'T HAVE FELLOWSHIP WITH THE FATHER AND WITH HIS SON RIGHT NOW. AND YET THAT'S WHAT THE EARLY NEW TESTAMENT CHURCH HAD. YOU KNOW WHAT? THEY DIDN'T HAVE BUMPER STICKERS THAT THEY PUT ON THE CAMELS THAT WERE WALKING THROUGH THE DESERT. THEY DIDN'T HAVE TELEVISION. THEY DIDN'T HAVE ALL OF THE THINGS THAT WE'VE GOT TODAY TO PROCLAIM THE GOSPEL. AND YET THE GOSPEL SPREAD SUPERNATURALLY SO THAT WITHIN 30 YEARS, AFTER THE RESURRECTION OF JESUS, IT SAYS THAT THE KNOWN uh, ROMAN WORLD WAS BASICALLY EVANGELIZED. ALEXANDRIA IN EGYPT WAS ONE OF THE MOST CHRISTIANIZED PLACED ON THE PLANET WITHIN 30 YEARS AFTER THE RESURRECTION BECAUSE THEY WEREN'T JUST PREACHING A DOCTRINE. THEY WERE PREACHING A REVELATION. THERE ARE ACTUALLY REPORTS THAT AS PEOPLE DIED IN THE Colosseum, THEY WERE FED TO THE LIONS, THEY WERE PUT IN NETS, AND THEY WOULD TURN BULLS LOOSE THAT WOULD GORE THEM AND JUST BEAT THEM TO DEATH. THEY WERE BURNED AT THE STAKE. THERE ARE ACTUAL REPORTS OF ROMANS JUMPING OUT OF THE STANDS AND GOING OUT INTO THE ARENA KNOWING THAT THEY WOULD BE PUT TO DEATH BECAUSE OF THEIR PROFESSION OF FAITH, BUT THEY WANTED WHAT THEY SAW IN THOSE CHRISTIANS. LET ME JUST ASK, HOW MANY OF YOU HAVE PEOPLE AROUND YOU THAT WANT WHAT YOU HAVE? AGAIN, I'M NOT SAYING THIS TO CONDEMN ANYBODY, BUT I'M SAYING THAT WE HAVE STOPPED SHORT OF HAVING THIS INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, AND THAT'S WHAT PRAYER IS REALLY FOR. PRAYER IS A VEHICLE THAT ALLOWS US TO COMMUNE WITH GOD, TO HAVE FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD, AND YES, WE CAN ASK AND RECEIVE. AND YES, THERE ARE TIMES THAT WE NEED TO SAY, GOD, I'M SORRY AND I'VE FAILED YOU, AND THERE ARE TIMES THAT WE NEED TO CAST OUR CARE OVER ON THE LORD. BUT THAT IS NOT WHAT PRAYER IS REALLY ALL ABOUT. THAT IS A SMALL PORTION OF IT. THE REAL PURPOSE OF PRAYER IS TO HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, TO BE IN FELLOWSHIP, IN COMMUNION WITH GOD, TO RECEIVE HIS LOVE AND TO RETURN LOVE BACK TO HIM. ANY PERSON WHO IS LOVE, 1 JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSES 8 AND 16 SAYS THAT GOD IS LOVE. AND ANY PERSON WHO LOVES HAS A DESIRE FOR THAT LOVE TO BE RETURNED UNTO THEM. YOU KNOW, THERE ARE PROBABLY PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM THAT YOU HAVE LOVED SOMEBODY AND YET THEY DIDN'T RECIPROCATE. THEY DIDN'T RETURN IT. AND MAN, IT BREAKS YOUR HEART WHEN THAT HAPPENS. 
NOW, GOD IS SO ALMIGHTY AND SO POWERFUL AND SO um, COMPLETE THAT IF WE DON'T GIVE HIM THE LOVE AND THE THANKS THAT that IS DUE UNTO HIM, I DON'T BELIEVE HE'S GOING TO FALL OFF OF HIS THRONE. HE'S GOING TO GET HIS HEART BROKEN, BUT I DO BELIEVE HE WANTS THAT. HE DESIRES FOR US TO JUST FELLOWSHIP WITH HIM, TO BE IN RELATIONSHIP WITH HIM. AND SAD TO SAY, MOST PEOPLE HAVE STOPPED SHORT OF IT. THAT'S WHAT ETERNAL LIFE IS. ETERNAL LIFE ISN'T SOMETHING THAT STARTS WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN. IT STARTS RIGHT NOW. IT'S PERSONAL, INTIMATE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD RIGHT NOW. AND THAT IS THE GOAL OF SALVATION. IF ALL YOU DID WAS GET YOUR SINS FORGIVEN SO YOU WON'T GO TO HELL, BUT INSTEAD YOU'LL GO TO HEAVEN, YOU'VE GOT A PORTION OF SALVATION, BUT YOU HAVEN'T GOT THE FULL THING UNTIL YOU ENTER IN TO RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD. LOOK AT THIS PASSAGE IN REVELATION CHAPTER 4 IN VERSE 10. IT'S SHOWING US WHAT'S HAPPENING IN HEAVEN RIGHT NOW. IT SAYS, THE FOUR AND TWENTY ELDERS FALL DOWN BEFORE HIM THAT SAT ON THE THRONE AND WORSHIP HIM THAT LIVETH FOREVER AND EVER AND CAST THEIR CROWNS BEFORE THE THRONE, SAYING, THOU ART WORTHY, O LORD, TO RECEIVE GLORY AND HONOR AND POWER, FOR THOU HAST CREATED ALL THINGS, AND FOR THY PLEASURE THEY ARE AND WERE CREATED. Boy, the last phrase right there, for God's pleasure, everything was and is now created for His pleasure. So this is really significant. This shows you that the original purpose of God creating the heavens and the earth, everything, all of the animals and us is for His pleasure. That was His original purpose, and it's still His purpose. It hadn't changed. You know, a lot of things have changed since sin entered the world. WE WOULDN'T HAVE GOVERNMENTS IF THERE WASN'T SIN. IF EVERYBODY WAS WALKING IN PERFECTION AND THERE WAS NO SIN, THERE WOULD BE NO REASON FOR A GOVERNMENT TO INTERVENE AND TO HAVE TO DO ANYTHING. Uh, THE CHURCH, AS IMPORTANT AS THE CHURCH IS, AND I AM 100% FOR THE CHURCH. I'M A PART OF THE CHURCH. I PROMOTE THE CHURCH. BUT DID YOU KNOW THE CHURCH, THE WORD ecclesiastia, IT MEANS CALLED OUT ONES. THERE WOULDN'T BE ANY NEED TO HAVE A CHURCH CALLED OUT ONES IF THERE HADN'T BEEN SIN. SO EVEN THE CHURCH, AS IMPORTANT AS THE CHURCH IS, IT'S A REACTION TO SIN. BUT SOMETHING THAT EXISTED BEFORE SIN ENTERED THE WORLD IS FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD. ADAM AND EVE MET WITH GOD IN THE COOL OF THE EVENING AND FELLOWSHIPED WITH HIM BEFORE THERE WAS SIN. SO IT WASN'T JUST ABOUT REPENTING IT WASN'T JUST ABOUT ASKING FOR SOMETHING. THEY MEANT WITH GOD WHEN THERE WAS NOTHING TO ASK, THERE WAS NOTHING TO REPENT OF. THEY JUST FELLOWSHIPPED WITH GOD. AND I BELIEVE THAT THAT'S WHAT THE MAJORITY OF PRAYER SHOULD BE. WE WERE CREATED FOR HIS PLEASURE. THAT'S THE ORIGINAL PURPOSE, AND HE STILL WANTS RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU. YOU KNOW, THAT'S AMAZING. AND THERE ARE MULTITUDES OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT THIS IS A NEW REVELATION TO YOU. YOU MAY FEEL LIKE GOD, OUT OF PITY, OUT OF OBLIGATION, SENT JESUS AND DIED FOR YOU AND SO THAT SOMEDAY YOU'LL GO TO HEAVEN. BUT you, YOU MAY BELIEVE THAT HE LOVED YOU ENOUGH TO DO THAT, BUT HE DOESN'T REALLY LIKE YOU. I'M NOT SAYING THAT GOD APPROVES OF EVERYTHING THAT WE DO. I'M NOT SAYING THAT IN OUR FALLEN STATE, WE ARE A FAR CRY FROM WHAT GOD INTENDED US TO BE. BUT I AM SAYING THAT GOD'S LOVE FOR YOU IS SO PERSONAL THAT HE NOT ONLY WANTS TO JUST TAKE YOU TO HEAVEN IN THE FUTURE, RIGHT NOW HE WANTS RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU. He he, YOU WERE CREATED FOR HIS PLEASURE, LIKE THIS VERSE SAYS. AND GOD GETS PLEASURE OUT OF YOU. YOU KNOW, LET ME SHARE ANOTHER PASSAGE WITH YOU OVER HERE OUT OF ACTS CHAPTER 13. AND IN VERSE 2, IT'S TALKING ABOUT PAUL AND SILAS AND A NUMBER OF DIFFERENT PEOPLE THAT WERE FASTING AND PRAYING. AND IT SAYS, AS THEY MINISTERED TO THE LORD AND FASTED, THE HOLY GHOST SAID, SEPARATE ME BARNABAS AND SAUL FOR THE WORK WHEREINTO I HAVE CALLED THEM. LOOK AT THIS. IT SAYS, AS THEY MINISTERED TO THE LORD. HOW DO YOU MINISTER TO GOD? AGAIN, MOST OF US THINK MINISTER IS SOMETHING LIKE WHAT I'M DOING RIGHT NOW. I'M A MINISTER, AND SO I'M TELLING PEOPLE THE TRUTH AND TELLING YOU THINGS THAT COULD HELP YOU AND STUFF. THIS ISN'T TALKING ABOUT THAT THEY WERE PREACHING TO THE LORD, TELLING THE LORD THAT HE NEEDED TO REPENT OR TO DO THIS OR THAT. YOU KNOW WHAT THEY WERE DOING? THEY WERE JUST WORSHIPING GOD. AS THEY WORSHIPED GOD, AS THEY WERE PRAYING AND GIVING HIM THANKS AND JUST THANKING HIM FOR THINGS AND JUST IN FELLOWSHIP WITH THE LORD, THEY COULD HAVE BEEN SINGING HYMNS. Uh, THEY COULD HAVE BEEN DOING A NUMBER OF DIFFERENT THINGS. 
BUT IT MINISTERED TO GOD. IT BLESSED GOD. YOU KNOW, ANOTHER PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE, THIS IS ALL THE WAY THROUGH THE BIBLE, BUT ESPECIALLY IN THE PSALMS, LIKE PSALMS CHAPTER 34, VERSE 1 SAYS, I WILL BLESS THE LORD AT ALL TIMES. HIS PRAISE SHALL CONTINUALLY BE IN MY MOUTH. MY SOUL SHALL MAKE HER BOAST IN THE LORD. THE HUMBLE SHALL HEAR THEREOF AND BE GLAD. O oh, MAGNIFY THE LORD WITH ME AND LET US EXALT HIS NAME TOGETHER, FOR I SOUGHT THE LORD AND HE HEARD ME AND DELIVERED ME FROM ALL MY FEARS. AND THAT IS REPEATED MULTIPLE TIMES THROUGHOUT THE BIBLE THAT WE ARE TO BLESS THE LORD. WHAT DOES IT MEAN TO BLESS THE LORD? IN CHURCH, YOU WILL OFTEN HEAR PEOPLE JUST GO, BLESS THE LORD, BLESS THE LORD, AND THAT MAY OR MAY NOT BLESS HIM. JUST SAYING THE WORDS, BLESS THE LORD, DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU'RE BLESSING THE LORD. WHEN IT SAYS THAT YOU BLESS THE LORD, THAT MEANS THAT WHEN WE START LOVING HIM AND THANKING HIM AND WORSHIPING HIM AND JUST COMMUNING WITH HIM AND JUST AS I WAS TALKING ABOUT IN ACTS CHAPTER 9, VERSE 10, WHERE THE LORD SAID, ANANIAS, AND ANANIAS SAID, BEHOLD, I AM HERE, LORD, AND WE'RE JUST THERE. WE'RE JUST IN HIS PRESENCE. WE'RE JUST HANGING OUT WITH THE LORD. WE'RE JUST FELLOWSHIPPING WITH THE LORD. DID YOU KNOW THAT THAT BLESSES THE LORD? When we, WHEN WE COME AND ASK, YES, THERE'S A PLACE TO ASK. YES, THERE'S A PLACE TO REPENT. I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU DON'T DO THOSE THINGS, BUT I'M SAYING that IF THAT'S ALL YOU DO IN PRAYER, IS USE GOD WHEN YOUR BACK IS AGAINST THE WALL AND YOU NEED HELP AND YOU CRY OUT, IF THAT'S THE ONLY TIME THAT YOU PRAY, IF THAT'S WHAT YOU CALL PRAYER, THEN YOU'RE MISSING THIS ETERNAL LIFE. YOU'RE MISSING OUT ON BLESSING THE LORD. GOD JUST WANTS YOU. HE WANTS FELLOWSHIP WITH YOU. AND AGAIN, I KNOW THAT MANY PEOPLE WATCHING THIS THINK, NO, I'M NOT, I'M NOT THAT IMPORTANT TO GOD. YOU KNOW HOW YOU ESTABLISH THE WORTH OF SOMETHING? IT'S BY WHATEVER PEOPLE ARE WILLING TO PAY FOR IT. I REMEMBER WHEN I WAS A KID, WE HAD THESE LITTLE BASEBALL CARDS. YOU'D BUY SOME BUBBLE GUM AND THEY HAD A LITTLE BASEBALL CARD ABOUT ONE OF THE PLAYERS. AND STUFF, AND THOSE THINGS, YOU COULD BUY IT, I THINK, FOR IS EITHER ONE CENT OR TWO CENT, AND YOU'D GET THE BUBBLE GUM AND THE CARD FOR JUST A PENNY OR SOMETHING LIKE THAT. AND YET SOME OF THOSE CARDS NOW SELL FOR MILLIONS OF DOLLARS. AND YET THE ACTUAL VALUE OF THAT CAR, IT'S NOT EVEN WORTH A PENNY. BUT YOU ESTABLISH VALUE BY WHAT PEOPLE ARE WILLING TO PAY FOR IT. AND THE VERY FACT THAT GOD ALMIGHTY SENT JESUS TO THIS EARTH AND DIED FOR US. HE GAVE, HE GAVE HIMSELF. HE GAVE THE VERY BEST THAT HE HAD FOR US. THAT PUTS A WORTH AND A VALUE ON YOU THAT I DON'T CARE WHAT YOU'VE DONE. I DON'T CARE HOW MESSED UP YOUR LIFE HAS BEEN. GOD PLACED A VALUE ON YOU THAT IS JUST AWESOME. AND HE CREATED YOU FOR FELLOWSHIP WITH HIM. YOU KNOW, I WAS, I was RAISED IN THIS CHURCH THAT JUST BASICALLY PREACHED THAT SALVATION IS ALL YOU GET IN THIS LIFE AND THEN EVERYTHING STARTS IN HEAVEN. AND IN THIS LIFE, THE ONLY JUSTIFICATION FOR YOUR EXISTENCE IS TO GO LEAD SOMEBODY ELSE TO THE LORD. I ACTUALLY HEARD A SERMON ONE TIME THAT SAID THAT IF GOD JUST WANTED TO BLESS YOU, THEN HE'D KILL YOU AND TAKE YOU TO HEAVEN. THAT'S WHEN YOU'LL BE BLESSED. THE ONLY REASON THAT YOU'RE LEFT HERE IS SO THAT YOU CAN GO LEAD SOMEBODY ELSE TO THE LORD. I UNDERSTOOD THE POINT THAT WAS BEING MADE THAT WE HAVE AN OBLIGATION TO SHARE THIS FAITH WITH OTHER PEOPLE, AND I UNDERSTOOD THAT, BUT THAT IS ABSOLUTELY WRONG TO SAY THAT THAT IS THE SOLE PURPOSE FOR US BEING ALIVE HERE IS TO GO LEAD SOMEBODY ELSE TO THE LORD. IF THAT WAS TRUE, WELL, THEN WHAT WAS THE PURPOSE OF ADAM AND EVE? THEY DIDN'T HAVE ANYBODY TO LEAD TO THE LORD. THEY DIDN'T HAVE ANY DEMONS TO CAST OUT. THEY DIDN'T HAVE ANYTHING TO DO LIKE THAT. AND YET THEY MEANT WITH GOD IN THE COOL OF THE EVENING JUST TO FELLOWSHIP WITH HIM. AND AGAIN, I GO BACK TO REVELATION CHAPTER 4, VERSE 11. FOR HIS PLEASURE WE ARE AND WERE CREATED. GOD WANTS RELATIONSHIP WITH YOU. YES, HE WANTS TO FLOW THROUGH YOU AND TOUCH OTHER PEOPLE SO THAT HE CAN HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH THEM, BUT IT'S NOT ABOUT JUST GOD USING YOU. GOD WANTS YOU. AND IF HE EVER GETS YOU, IF HE EVER GETS YOUR HEART, HE WILL GET YOUR SERVICE. I'M A TESTIMONY OF THIS. THAT AGAIN, I WAS RAISED IN THIS CHURCH THAT IT WAS ALL ABOUT GETTING SOMEBODY ELSE SAVED. I USED TO GO OUT AND KNOCK ON DOORS AND WITNESS TO PEOPLE AND STUFF, BUT I WOULD GO TO ADULT VISITATION ON THURSDAY NIGHT. I STARTED A SPECIAL YOUTH VISITATION, AND BETWEEN THOSE TWO, I'D PROBABLY MAKE ANYWHERE FROM 10 TO 15 VISITS 
a week. But did you know I would pass up dozens, hundreds of people at school and things during the week because it wasn't visitation night. I was doing that as a formal type of thing. But man, when I encountered the Lord, March the 23rd, 1968, and God touched my life, and I felt His love flow through me, when, I, when He got my heart, He got my service. And I quit the Tuesday night and the Thursday night visitation because I was out knocking on at least 100 doors a day and I started witnessing to everything that moved. I actually made a commitment one time that I'd never see a person that I didn't witness to them. And of course, I couldn't do that. When I got in the army and I was standing at attention and watching hundreds of people march past me, I, I just realized I couldn't do that. But I mean, that was my desire. When the Lord got my heart, He got my service. And there are many of you that are praying, oh God, help me to get over this problem. Help me to do all of this, if you just gave Him your heart and if you just started fellowshipping with God in love and letting Him minister to you, that it would, it would change your life. You would serve God more accidentally than you ever have on purpose before. But see, most people, again, prayer is to them a vehicle that they use to go get something from God USED TO REPENT AND TELL GOD HOW SORRY THEY ARE, BUT THEY DON'T USE IT TO FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD AND RECEIVE HIS LOVE AND RECEIVE HIS JUST PRESENCE WITH YOUR LIFE. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, YOU'RE ON YOUR OWN AND YOU WAIT UNTIL YOU CRASH AND BURN AND THEN YOU RUN TO GOD IN PRAYER. I'M TELLING YOU, IF WE WOULD JUST LIVE IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD AND FELLOWSHIP WITH HIM ON A REGULAR BASIS, IF PRAYER WAS SOMETHING THAT WE USED TO LITERALLY JUST LIVE IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD, LIVE IN AN ATTITUDE OF PRAYER, CONVERSATIONAL PRAYER, JUST COMMUNION, FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD WHERE YOU'RE CONSTANTLY KEEPING YOUR MIND STAYED ON HIM. YOU DON'T ALLOW THINGS TO COME INTO YOUR MIND OR INTO YOUR HEART THAT ARE CONTRARY TO WHAT HE WANTS FOR YOU. YOU'RE JUST DEDICATED TO GOD AND YOU'RE CONSTANTLY IN PRAYER AND COMMUNION WITH HIM. IF YOU WERE TO LIVE THAT WAY, YOU WOULDN'T HAVE NEAR AS MANY TIMES THAT YOU CRASH AND BURN AND HAVE TO RUN TO GOD FOR HELP. YOU WOULDN'T HAVE NEAR AS MANY NEEDS. MATTER OF FACT, GOD SAID IN MATTHEW CHAPTER 6, VERSE 33, THAT IF YOU WOULD SEEK FIRST THE KINGDOM OF GOD AND HIS RIGHTEOUSNESS, ALL OF THESE THINGS WOULD BE ADDED UNTO YOU. AND THE THINGS THAT HE'S TALKING ABOUT IS WHAT YOU EAT AND WHERE YOU SLEEP AND WHAT YOU'RE CLOTHED WITH. IF WE WOULD JUST LIVE IN THE PRESENCE OF THE LORD, THINGS WOULD GO SO MUCH BETTER THAT YOU WOULDN'T HAVE AS MANY THINGS TO ASK GOD FOR, AS MANY THINGS TO REPENT OF. I'M TELLING YOU, THERE IS A BETTER WAY TO PRAY, AND IT'S JUST TO LOVE GOD, TO COMMUNE WITH HIM, TO BE THANKFUL. I'VE GOT A LOT MORE TO SHARE ABOUT THIS, BUT I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY. I AM GOING TO CONTINUE THIS ON OUR PROGRAM TOMORROW. I'VE GOT THIS LITTLE BOOKLET THAT IS A BRIEF INTRODUCTION TO THIS SUBJECT. IT'S A SUMMARY OF THE WHOLE TEACHING, AND WE'RE GIVING THIS AWAY ABSOLUTELY FREE AND THEN WE HAVE MY BOOK ON A BETTER WAY TO PRAY. WE HAVE THIS IN ENGLISH AND IN SPANISH. WE HAVE A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS MADE SO THAT YOU COULD TEACH OTHER PEOPLE THROUGH A BIBLE STUDY, SUNDAY SCHOOL CLASS. WE HAVE USBs, CDs, DVDs, AND WE EVEN HAVE AN AUDIO BOOK. AND IF YOU'LL LISTEN, OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL OF THE DIFFERENT WAYS OF GETTING THIS. BUT I PROMISE YOU, YOU NEED TO HEAR THIS. YOU AREN'T GOING TO HEAR THESE THINGS SAID ABOUT PRAYER VERY OFTEN. I THINK IT WOULD REALLY BE A BLESSING TO YOU. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THE INFORMATION AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. ANDREW IS OFFERING HIS BOOKLET, A BETTER WAY TO PRAY, AS HIS FREE GIFT TO YOU TODAY. THIS BOOKLET IS AVAILABLE IN ENGLISH OR SPANISH AND IS LIMITED TO ONE FREE BOOKLET PER HOUSEHOLD. THIS OFFER IS AVAILABLE IN THE U.S., U.K., CANADA, AND AUSTRALIA. CONTACT US TODAY TO RECEIVE YOUR FREE BOOKLET. Andrew's complete series, A Better Way to Pray, is available in a book and study guide in either English or Spanish. Or you can get this teaching in a newly updated CD or DVD album or as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew is also offering this teaching as an audiobook on CD or it can be purchased through audible.com. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. 
The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719 719- 635-1111. I want to let you know that we are giving away a free Karis course. It's the first course that I teach in our curriculum in our Bible college. It's entitled A Sure Foundation, and it's a free course. It's a giveaway that we are giving to people just so that you can sample what Karis Bible College is all about. So you can go to kariscourse.com and you can get this free course that we're offering. It's an eight hour teaching. I promise you to be a blessing. Check it out. You were created with a purpose. Written in the heart of God. Long before you were born. He is calling you to find it. We want to help you. Experience his unconditional love to be equipped and empowered to become a world changer. I'd like to give you a special invitation to come to our 2023 Healing is Here conference. It's August the 8th through the 11th here in Woodland Park. And I'll not only be speaking along with Carrie Pickett, Greg Moore, Carly Terradez, Daniel Amstutz, our staff here that ministers on healing a lot. But this year we have Benny Hinn coming to be with us for two days. And so this is just gonna be a great time. We'll see a lot of miracles happen. I would encourage you to come and be a part of it. Remember it's August the 8th through the 11th in Woodland Park, Colorado, Karis Bible College for our 2023 Healing is Here. Man, I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out Army, check out the benefits. As a member of Army, you, you become part of Andrew's uh, big army of, of ministers that are ministering with him and that are that are uh, we're mobilizing people around the word and the direction that God gives Andrew. Plus, you get Andrew's live Bible commentary. Then you, we also get, you get four Karis Bible College courses per year. We can do more uh, together than we can individually and on our own. And I tell you, encouragement is something that is yeah. hard for ministers to come by. Mm-hmm. And yet this is what this army is all about. So yeah. the website will give you a lot of the details if you'll check it out. And we would just love for you to be a part of this and receive all of these benefits. We're here to help each other and to get the gospel out. Amen. See Jesus glorified. Amen.